This season, it might just feel a little different. It also might look and sound different, but boy, are we thankful to be playing basketball again. And where better to start than in Lexington, Kentucky, where once again, the Wildcats have the nation's number one recruiting class, and they open up against the Eagles of Moorhead State. My partner once again is Jimmy Dykes. I'm Paul Sunderland, and Jimmy, We've already seen it around the country. We've seen it here in Lexington. Is this season going to pro provide unprecedented challenges? Yeah, I think it already has. I love what Coach Calipari told you and I earlier today. He said, win or lose, let's just be thankful and grateful that we're playing ball. Now, he may change his tune in the second half if they're behind, but what you're going to see from Kentucky today, uncommon times, but what is common, the length, the talent, and the inexperience. Brandon Boston, Jr., the number five overall recruit leading this top-ranked class for Kentucky. Yeah, Paul, he is wired to score, man. 6'7", about 180 pounds. He can shoot the ball. He can get it to the elbows. He can twist his body around the rim and make hard-guarded shots. He needs to become the alpha dog of this Kentucky team early in the season, something to keep an eye on. If he's not, the guy that could is the transfer Olivier Saar from Wake Forest. Was going to be an all-ACC player this year. The seven-footer is capable of throwing a double-double uh, for Kentucky all season long. He could make a run for the SEC player of the year. He's that good. Now let's take a look at tonight's starting lineups brought to you by Farm Rich. First for the Kentucky Wildcats. Devin Askew out of Sacramento originally will get the start at the point guard position. And Isaiah Jackson has added offense to his game and has been a very, very pleasant surprise around these parts. For Moorhead State, they've had some injury issues there without their best player. They need some real scoring early on. Jimmy from Davon Cooper, the 6'4", redshirt junior who had to sit out last year because of injuries out of Louisville, Kentucky. And we are underway, immediately attacked by Boston, but a turnover by Kentucky. You no, know, it's a Moorhead State team that really struggled to shoot the ball last year. They feel like they're a better shooting ball club. The key for Moorhead State in this game, can they rebound the ball and keep Kentucky off the glass? If they can, they've got a shot to hang in this thing for a while. Had a very impressive shoot around earlier today at Rupp Arena. Looked very comfortable. Knew exactly what they wanted to try to accomplish, as difficult as that may be, against a team as talented as Kentucky. Wide open look from distance, James Baker. Long rebound battle for, and it'll be along the sideline and save, but onto the floor to Boston Jr. Boy, lots of contact there, and he throws it off the back of the Moorhead State Eagle, and it'll be Kentucky basketball. You know, I've watched Kentucky now practice at least four or five times, a couple of times at Pro Day and Big Blue Madness, and he's a, a slender kid, Boston is, but so far, so far now, he's been able to play through contact at a pretty good level. Kentucky opens that floor to start with offensively with no post player on that low block, so driving angles are there. What a force. Wow. What a shot by Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> Isaiah Jackson, six foot ten freshman out of Pontiac, Michigan. Everybody knew he was a shot blocker. Everybody knew he was a rim runner, but they didn't know he could shoot like that. Yeah, he's got a good shooting touch. That was a half two moment by Jackson. Calipari comes with a full court press after the made basket. It's just kind of a token press, I believe. Uh, Coach Cal talking to us today about his press and just to kind of slow the game down a little bit, give Moorhead State a short clock to work with in the half court. John Calipari in his 12th season here in Lexington with the University of Kentucky 29th overall. Last year was the SEC Coach of the Year when Kentucky went 15-3 and three in conference and as a program won their 49th SEC championship. And speaking of that, a 2012 national championship for Kentucky and Coach Cal. He just keeps bringing them in, doesn't he, on the recruiting trail, Coach Calipari. I was here last week and we talked about he has more first round draft picks since he's been at Kentucky than the entire Big Ten conference has had since he's been at Kentucky. Really? That is amazing. That is a remarkable, remarkable number. A little touch foul along the baseline as we get our first look at number five, six foot seven freshman Terrence Clark out of Boston. He was the number eight overall recruit. Preston Spradlin in his fourth full year at Moorhead State spent five years right here in Lexington working in various roles as an assistant. Has some of the same play calls and the same language that we hear from Kentucky's practices. I, you mentioned earlier, I was very impressed with his practice today and preparation. Moorhead State, they know exactly how they want to play the game. It was concise, it was clear, it was compact. 
And now can they execute against this length and talent that Kentucky throws on the floor? Mentioned that Moorhead State had had some injury issues. Unfortunately, Tajan Clod, six foot eight sophomore, one of their leading scorers and rebounders, out for the rest of the year with a torn ACL. He will undergo surgery in the coming weeks. That ball deflected out of bounds. Just underway here at Rupp Arena, Kentucky and Moorhead State, 12 to shoot. Paul, that's a big loss to Moorhead State. Tajon Claw, a, a double double guy, most likely is going to be an all OVC player. A huge hit for the Eagles early. Kentucky working against a zone for the first time this season. Going left, pull up, jump shot, the first basket by Devin Askew, six foot three freshman, originally from Sacramento. He shoots a really good ball. I know he's got a lot on his plate right now as a point guard, and Calipari is constantly in his ear wearing him out. But I think that kid shoots the ball potentially about as well as any point guard Cal's had at Kentucky over the last three or four years. There's depth at the point guard position for Kentucky. There was some question about whether or not he would become the starter. And earlier today, when we had a Zoom conversation after shoot around with Coach Cal, he said that, look, Devin Askew is my point guard. And that was a very strong statement. Well, he, he, well I tell you what Cal did. He made, he made the statement to his entire team and said, this is my guy. This is my point guard, and he seems to do that every year. Cal does early. Now, we'll ask you to hold on to that spot. But for now, Devin Askew is the point guard. Mintz can play at some. Clark can play at some. But he's rolling with number two in white early. He was the number one point guard recruit coming out of high school last year. That should just be a senior in high school. So physically, he's ready for this level. I think mentally, he's tough enough to handle that quarterback spot under Calipari. And it's not easy to handle. Nice kick to the corner, feet set. You mentioned the three-point shooting or lack thereof for Moorhead State, and you can't get a better look than that. That's Fletcher charge. down the lane. Yeah, that's good defense. Getting back defensively for Moorhead State. And Isaiah Jackson will be called for the personal foul wearing number 23. Yeah, Jackson can really run. And that time he just ran out of control. And I put that on the guards, though. you got to see the eyes for Jackson and know what's in front of him. Kentucky got lucky on that last possession. A bad breakdown in transition defense. Gave up a wide open corner three. Kentucky was 25 and 6 last year overall. Mentioned their SEC championship. And boy, did they have a difficult non conference schedule coming up. Step back jump shot. That's going to be well wide. That missed by Davon Cooper. They need him to make some shots. Kentucky looking to run. Fletcher again. You mentioned his ability to go north and south. Or are we facing east and west? I can never figure it out. Yeah, Jackson is he's such a good athlete running the middle of the floor, 23 and white. You see the hands of the kid that time in transition. Long strides. 23 and white is the fastest Kentucky Wildcat from baseline to three-quarter court sprint. And he's a 6'10 long guy that you don't have to run plays for. He just goes and makes plays. Seven foot five wingspan. I read that note as well about his ability to get up and down I was very surprised. There's some pretty good athletes on this Kentucky team. And I was here that day on Pro Day when he ran that sprint, just eye-popping how quickly, boom, his first step and second step is for a kid with that much length. Davon Cooper running out of real estate along the sideline here at Rupp Arena, and Moorhead State turns it over, trailing early, just underway, 6-2, to two, Kentucky leading. Now we need to mention that Kentucky, Moorhead, no one in college basketball this year has had an exhibition game, a private scrimmage, anything like that. This is first Thanks live action other than against yourself. And a good job by Clark to read the defense, take up the slack, knock down the mid-range game. Terrence Clark, six foot seven freshman out of Boston, weighing 194, the number eight overall recruit. Boston, <laughs> Boston is sort of a theme here. Brandon Boston Jr., he was the number five recruit listed overall. Drive and penetration, a little Euro jump step, and split the defense. Nice score that time by James Baker. Yeah, Calipari won a travel call. Askew slid over, was in the right spot. Just got his feet frozen at the end, allowed to slip. Askew. Clark thought about it again, got bumped on the perimeter, no question about that. You said that uh, Coach Cal wanted to travel. Should point out, so did the other 3,000 fans, 15% capacity. It is different here in Rupp Arena. But it is a sellout tonight. <laughs> Available tickets are gone. <laughs> College basketball coming your way. Opening day, opening night here on the SEC Network. 
another awfully good class. That number you gave about the draft picks and all of that with compared to the Big Ten, just remarkable. Well, what John Calipari has done is he targets guys that want to come here and, and get their rear ends to work. He doesn't promise a certain number of shots. He's not going to bring a guy in that wants to get 20 shots up a game. This is an equal opportunity offense. And uh, you defend, you rebound, you run, you're coachable, you get to play. If not, you need to go somewhere else. And Cal has always stuck with that. I think he and his staff, Paul, do a tremendous job. When you're dealing with that type of elite talent, he finds guys that want to come in here and listen to him and go to work without an agenda. And he's done it year after year after year. And it's not easy to do. He talked about his formula with us both this afternoon after their shoot around. It was fascinating. What is the game going to present to you, not only as the future rolls, but what does it present to you right now? Saar double team. Kick outside, jumper on the way, well short. Offensive rebound taken and put back up and in by Jackson. Yeah, I mean, the game tells you what to do. That time, Saar was double teamed, so the game's telling him one power dribble out, reverse it to the far side of the floor. And again, the, my guy Jackson, you don't run plays for him. He just makes plays, and he will all season long. Good seal down inside, but the ball is not handled and turned over that time by Janae Broom, the six foot ten freshman out of Plant City, Florida, who had a pretty good angle to get to the rim. Yeah, Morehead State's running good stuff. They're getting the ball reversed from one side of the floor to the other a little bit, making Kentucky work. And now they come with a 2 2 1 three quarter court press. Will they drop to a zone? And they do out of it. Jackson already with half a dozen, a perfect three for three from the floor. I think if you're more, it's that you have to change your defenses up tonight. Yeah. And there you go. That's, a, that, that's why you do it right there. The man-on-man -man talent is just too much to go nose to nose for 40 minutes. Askew with the miscue, turned it over. Oh, attack of the rim. That shot rejected. Jackson got a piece of that going quickly the other way. Boy, there's lots of contact. Bodies flying everywhere. And that's going to be free throws coming to Terrence Clark. That is a big time aggressive attack by Baker, but a bigger aggressive attack defensively by Kentucky. And John Calipari challenged his guys this week, Paul. He said, I keep hearing we have all these shot blockers. We don't block <laughs> shots. And uh, well, that was the attention of Moorhead State this morning in their shoot around. When you go to the rim, you have to get it up high over the length of this Kentucky team. Kentucky doesn't shoot as many three pointers as a lot of their teams. Other teams around the SEC or around the country, but boy, did they ever get to the free throw line and they make you pay. Yeah, they did last year. Look at that. They, they won ball games last year for that charity stripe. They were so good at every position for the most part, knocking down those uh, wide open 15 footers from the charity stripe. And, and that's John Calipari's formula six for success. We're going to shoot more free throws. Uh, we're going to make more free throws than you attempt. We're going to defend, we're going to rebound, and we're going to run. And if you press us, we're going to score 150 points. That <laughs> seems to be his formula every year. Well, it's worked pretty well everywhere he's been. First at UMass, then on to Memphis, and now here at Kentucky now in his 12th year. Second year of a 10-year contract. Morehead State showing some pretty good patience, but they turn it over once again. Yeah, just uh, Janae Broom. That I think he's a really a good-looking freshman, about 6'10", 235 pounds. Just not used to the extra length behind him. I mean, guys that big, they don't play against 6'10", 6'11 guys in high school. So this is a whole new look for Broom, the freshman from Moorhead. Number 10 in white, Davion Mintz taken over at the point guard position, the 6'3 graduate transfer. Charlotte, North Carolina had a very, very productive year at Creighton. Really does a good job of taking care of the ball. He, he is Kentucky's best shooter. Day in and day out, Davion Mintz, 10 in white, at the top of your screen is Kentucky's best shooter. Isaiah Jackson on the little step back mid-range jump shot got hit on the arm. So number 23 will get to the free throw line. Also on the floor wearing number 55 in white for Kentucky is Lance Ware. Another freshman, 6'9", 223 out of Camden, New Jersey. Paul, I talked about Mintz, the transfer from Creighton there, number 10. Just, a, a, I think, very valuable. He will win some ball games for Kentucky this year because he will settle the team down as a combo guard. He's a very good bulldog point guard defender. I'm telling you, he can really shoot the basketball. I think Boston's got a pretty good stroke. Astu's got a pretty good stroke. D Dante Allen can shoot the ball, but none of them can shoot the ball better than Davion Mintz. Talked about Saar, the impact that he will have after three very solid years for the departed Danny Manning at Wake Forest. Davion Mintz in his sophomore year.
led the Big East in assist to turnover ratio, and, and Coach Cal very excited about playing him a lot, along with uh, Devin Askew at the off guard to so take advantage of the shooting that you were just talking about. Moorhead State needs a basket. 13-40 remaining in the opening half. Kentucky leading at 12-4. So far, Kentucky very comfortable pressing full court because Moorhead State not attacking the rim off that Kentucky full court pressure. Well, you mentioned right before the opening tip how long Kentucky is. They get out and play some defense. That shot not close Whoop. by Julius Dixon. It's two in a row. <laughs> a little excited. Opening day. Well, he's got a handle, doesn't he, Clark? Wow. Yeah. He, he, he can get to the paint. Matter of fact, he has led Kentucky in paint touches throughout fall camp. And what I'm talking about is his ability to get the ball inside the lane area and make a play. And, and Clark is the guy right now that can really get there about any time he wants. Moorhead State in some serious foul trouble with a lifetime left in the opening half already with seven team fouls. And uh, Terrence Clark with some magnificent handles. He'll spend some time at the point as well. Well, you forget that the guy is 6'7", talking about Clark, but he's got the high dribble. He can misdirection you. He can change pace with it. At the end of the day, that's a long striding guard from that wing position that can really do some major damage driving that ball to the rim. He is an athletic freak, is what he is, Terrence Clark. Cal has worn him out <laughs> from day one to not be casual and get the bad habits out of your game. I mean, worn him out. Well, very talented basketball players and loads of them come to Kentucky under Coach Calipari and they get better and they go on to the NBA and absolutely flourish because they learn how to play basketball. Nothing inside. Here comes Kentucky out on the run. That's a bucket all day long. I'm telling you, it doesn't matter if it's pregame shoot around or at halftime when you're warming up or the craft center at 7 a.m. Ten in white can stroke it. Boy, Kentucky's defense early, Paul. They are alive and alert. You, you can hear them talking, which I love, with an empty Rupp Arena. They're really doing a nice job of just walling up any inside touch and using their length. And there's that stroke by Mintz, man. It is, it, it, it's as pure as we have in the SEC this year. There's some good players in the SEC. I think this kid right here will shoot the ball with any of them. He's going to get on the on the scouting report real Quick. soon now. Yep, that was a beautiful looking jump shot. 13 to two run by Kentucky, and they lead it 15 to four over Moorhead State. Kentucky playing Moorhead State for the 11th time, and Kentucky is a perfect 10 and 0 so far in the all-time series. It was a great line, Jimmy. Every ticket is sold, 3,000 to sell out once again at Rupp Arena. Something, yeah, just a just a strange feeling for yep. everybody looking yep. around and. But a terrific job by Kentucky to make it almost a seamless transition with as much as they've had to deal with from Mitch Barnhart on down. They, they, have, uh, they have pulled it off about as well as you can. And in the last 72 hours had to deal with even more as Detroit Mercy, who was supposed to take part in this uh, bluegrass showcase, had to withdraw because of contact tracing and COVID testing. So they were out. Boy, well, Mintz doing a good job up until that point. Still staying in front of the ball, moving his feet. Forcing the turnover. Here comes Askew. Askew up and under. Pulled a little bit short. Pulled the string on that. It'll be Moorhead State basketball. With 12.23 remaining in the opening half here in Lexington. We'll talk about it more as the game goes on. But for just the second time, during Coach Calipari's tenure here, now in his 12th season. Kentucky was not picked to win the SEC this year. It was Rick Barnes and the Tennessee Volunteers. Well, I, I, I voted Tennessee number one to begin with as well. I mean, that, that is a loaded squad down there that's an older squad. I, I think old is going to win in college basketball this year, especially early with all the distractions and the pauses and practice and all those things. But this Kentucky team is... I don't think there's a team in college basketball that has a higher ceiling, more room to improve than the team right now in Rupp Arena wearing white uniforms. 
Nice turn of the corner. That ball blocked by Saar, but it's going to be called for a goaltend, and Moorhead State needed a basket any way they could get it. And Talon Cooper, number 55 in blue, able to get to the rim. Yeah, Talon Cooper is a 6'4 a, a point guard, good length, not a jet. Got the corner turned. If you're Moorhead State out of the Ohio Valley Conference, you have to have a stud to come into Rupp Arena and win the ball game. And you look at those great teams out of the Ohio Valley over the last few years. Belmont had Dylan Windler, who's an All-American. Isaiah Cannon and John Moran at Murray State. The kid at Austin P this year, Terry Taylor. And them dudes can play with anybody. And I'm not sure that the Moorhead State has that kind of a guy. Clark with easy attack of the basket, now with five. Kentucky leading it by 11. And very efficient, 7 of 11 from the floor, while Moorhead State is only 2 of 10 so far. Cal stays with his full court pressure, making his young guys work. And there's the ability of Clark. He, he just has a knack to get an angle before the catch, and that angle sets him up really well to get to the rim off one or two bounces. Five's a player, no doubt. Six days since Kentucky played a basketball game, and there'll be more coming your way on the SEC Network. Coming up next, opening night, college basketball doubleheader rolls on with Jacksonville State taking on Alabama in a matchup of the Cotton State schools in Tuscaloosa right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. That's an Alabama team that they could finish in the top three or four of this league. Got a kid like John Petty and uh, Shackelford. Can Javon Quinterly, the... the point guard who transferred and set out last year keep that train rolling down the tracks with the speed that NATO wants but keep an eye on Alabama they've got athletes now and that NATO system is hard to guard congratulations to the former Bama star Kyra Lewis going number 13 to the New Orleans Pelicans in the most recent NBA draft for the SEC he showed up very nicely two Kentucky players taken in the first round Tyrese Maxey along with Emmanuel quickly Ball deflected out of bounds. It'll be Moorhead State's basketball. 11-10 remaining in the opening half. Plenty of time to shoot. You know, this year, Paul, if the offense retains possession on their end of the floor, the shot clock's going to go to 20 seconds. No longer going to be reset at 30. And that's just to speed up the game a little bit. Yeah, create more possessions. I think it's a very good idea. For some big performances today around the country already. Look at Sam Hauser from Virginia with 19 points. And uh, Virginia's win over Towson. Ayo DeSumu from Illinois had uh, 28. His running buddy Adam Miller had 28. Uh, Illinois put 122 points up today. Good gracious. You think they were anxious to play? Every team around the country is anxious to play against somebody. Yeah, the other team wasn't anxious to defend, I can <laughs> no, tell you that. They, no, they were not. Luca Garza had a typical 26 and 10. He's a, everybody's national preseason yeah. player of the year, rightfully so. Seeing that backcourt combination Trying now of Davion Mintz wearing number 10 in white. Askew Morgan. came back on to replace Brandon Boston, who picked up the personal foul. Moorhead State, seven team fouls. Kentucky now with five. Well, here's that. Zone look by Moorhead State. It's a just kind of a four round one, almost like a Syracuse big zone that rotates up the floor. Unselfish play by Sar, kicking out of the double team. That's really good ball right there. That is, that the ball didn't go in. That's a really good possession, though, by Kentucky. Look at Cal clapping. He knows the same yeah. thing. I'm going to clap, too. The ball didn't go in, but, man, there's a lot of good things in that possession. And those two point guards, if they are still that, Mintz and uh, Askew working very, very nicely together to create an open look, an unselfish play that time by Saar, as I mentioned, kicking out of the double team. I, I, I think Olivier Saar is tremendous. I mean, he's out of the short corner dunkers spot which is about eight or ten feet off the block on along the baseline area offensively he can catch and knock down that shot he can fly in from that position for the lobs and the tip dunks he can also put it on the floor a little bit and get to his back to the basket moves this kid is when he became a kentucky wildcat in my estimation he took kentucky from a good team to a potential great team he just picked up his second personal foul and will go to the sideline with 1024 remaining. An interesting story. He thought about putting himself in for the NBA draft last year, and he met with his then head coach, Danny Manning, and they were planning out what was going to be his senior season for the Demon Deacons at Wake Forest. But then Danny Manning, months after the season ended, 
his contract was terminated, and then Saar put himself into the transfer portal, portal and got a lots of attention and ended up here at Kentucky. Boy, was he excited this afternoon when we talked to him. Yes, and everyone that signed off on it from the SEC office to the NCAA, they, they did the right thing, making him eligible this year. That last play asked you just, I don't know what he was thinking. Just dribbled the ball across half court right into two defenders and fell down. That's not in the playbook? No. <laughs> it better, it better not be. <laughs> He'll learn. He, there's so many things I like about him. Again, you, we're going to forget all season long yeah. that number two in white should be a senior in high school. And he's running this Kentucky offense with Cal constantly wearing him out in, in a good way, just coaching him hard knowing how important that spot is, and I think this kid's built to take it. Yeah, he reclassified for the class of 2020, and here he is starting his first college basketball game in one of the most storied basketball programs in the history of college athletics. Yeah, to me, that's just a lifted 2-3 zone that rotates into like a four-round one zone. Boston offensive rebound and off the initial miss, Boston. and number three in white has the basket. Kentucky leading it 19-7. Morehead State is running their stuff. They're being pretty patient. And Janai Broom, who we talked about, you liked him, Jimmy, right at the front of the rim, laying it up left-handed. No, that, that's a good call by you. They are running good stuff, and they're not turning the ball over. They just had the inability to finish around the rim against that size. And I like the zone move by Preston Spradlin, just making Kentucky feel a little uncomfortable and staying out of rhythm. Step back jump shot by Boston off the front of the rim and Moorhead State trailing by only 10. Got a chance to get back into this before the end of the first half. Plenty of time left. Beautiful pass but can't be finished down inside. You got to score that. Askew at the other end through contact lays it up and in. Boy was that quick. Yeah in three seconds because he released that ball with 27 on the shot clock and a team that can really run they can finish around that three second mark just like Kentucky did. Anything surprised you at all about Kentucky so far, their length and shot blocking ability at the defensive end? No, I, th I, th I think they've handled this game really well. I mean, defensively, they're locked in, they're talking, you can hear them talking. They're handling the, all the different screens that Moorhead State's throwing at them. Kick they're ahead. sharing the ball. Lob pass there, probably ill advised. It'll come back to Jacob Toppin just on the floor of the transfer out of Rhode Island. His older brother had a pretty good career at the University of Dayton. Obi Toppin, the National Player of the Year, went number eight to the New York Knicks in the recent NBA draft. There he is, number zero in white. Yeah, he, he can jump higher than any Kentucky Wildcat, 42 and a half, I think, on the vertical. But he just got his stuff thrown from James Baker, <laughs> who's 6'6". James Baker did lead the OVC two years ago in block shots, but James Baker just said, I don't care if your last name is Toppin. James Baker averaged nine points, four rebounds last year, and as you mentioned, 104 blocks for his career and led the OVC with 55. Careful. There's the turnover. And going quickly the other way, lays it up and in, nicely done by K.J. Hunt, six foot three redshirt junior out of Little Rock, Arkansas. This zone for Moorhead State changed things a little bit. What's making Kentucky think on the offensive end? The ball's got to get below the free throw line extended. There it is for the first time. Something good will happen. Make the defense respond to it. Nice ball movement. That should go in. There Askew we go. buries the three right on cue, Jimmy. Yeah, well, the ball movement was too good. Askew caught the thing in rhythm. Another really good offensive possession by the Cats. Just like that, Kentucky back up to a 13-point lead. 7.30 remaining in the opening half, 24-11. Good help by Clark, and then to come back out and sprint through. That, that, a tremendous defensive series by Clark that time, Paul. He was the help defender on the low block and then recovered to get his hand in the passing lane. Kentucky alert defensively. The length is a real problem for Moorhead State to finish again. This is the possession they got it from rim to rim in three seconds. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, I told you. Back in Rupp Arena, you know, we were talking earlier about the SEC. I, th I think it's loaded up this year. And watching a lot of games throughout the day and hearing talk of Final Four potential, no one's talking about Tennessee. They I think they're that good. I think Tennessee could be a Final Four team. I think Kentucky could be a Final Four team. I think there's another one there as well between LSU, Florida. Al Alabama could get hot at the right time. 
That was a leak last year, Paul. It was only going to send probably four, maybe five teams to the NCAA tournament had we had it. I think the SEC this year will be back in that between six and eight mark, probably closer to eight. Calipari knows what's in front of him, and he has a difficult schedule in non-conference before he gets to the Tennessees and the LSUs and the Floridas. This young Kentucky team, as always, must grow up early. Coach Calipari telling us earlier today that he probably overscheduled given the fact the way the season has planned out or played out and all of the other challenges off the court. Play Kansas next week, Georgia Tech, Louisville, and UCLA all coming up before conference play. You know, and, and he's maneuvering early right now without Keon Brooks, yes. who is the only scholarship guy that Kentucky brings back this year that has played a minute in a Kentucky uniform. No Kentucky player today on scholarship has ever played for John Calipari in a game. That, that is amazing. You talked about a complete restart. You're looking at it right now. Keon Brooks Jr., six foot seven, 205 sophomore out of Fort Wayne, Indiana, really played well, particularly late last year in that miraculous comeback against Florida that sealed the championship in the SEC. Didn't seal it. Kentucky already had it, but uh, he was really coming on out right now with a calf injury. Nice play That's by Brandon by Boston. Boston to finish. Looking for the three-point play. The ballot's on Dixon. That's his second. Yeah, the Kentucky, they're, they're, they're so good in transition because they're so long. I mean, you can get back, but they can just finish over the top of you. Boston can do it. Clark can do it. Obviously, Isaiah Jackson can do it. Good on the free throw where Kentucky now from the line is four of eight. But very, very efficient 11 of 19 from the floor, whereas uh, Moorhead State continues to struggle. Yeah, Keon Brooks is a, I think he's a crucial, crucial role for Kentucky this year. He really came on late last year. The last game against Florida was probably his best game. But you look at that front line at some point with Saar and Jackson and Keon Brooks, they can hold up with anybody. I know everybody's talking about how good North Carolina's front line is going to be. Kentucky could pot potentially, I think, be right there with. Played in all 31 games last year, made six starts. Coach Cal said that he's starting to get back on the court and doing some things, and I'm sure hopefully he will be back for games uh, coming up very, very shortly against the likes of Kansas and maybe even a game you're doing on Sunday against a very, very good team from Richmond. Yeah, Brooks does a little bit of everything. That, that game Sunday will be a monster matchup. Richmond picked to win the A-10. Had five starters coming back off of a 24-win team last year. Had lost one to injury, but the guy they're plugging in, Burton, is maybe their best potential pro prospect down the line. That will be a test of all tests for Kentucky on Sunday afternoon. Topping off the back of the iron, Broom takes the rebound in the paint for Moorhead State. The Eagles trailing it now 28 to 11. Just can't nice. score inside, but they do right on cue. That, that was Broom. really nice slip by Janae Broom. Again, this Broom is a freshman from Florida. 6'10", 235, good shoulders, good strong butt, legs, ankles. Like, he's a good-looking athlete and just really a nice job on the slip. That was a butt with two T's, correct? I believe it was. <laughs> Careful. But I, I, I like I, I like when we watched them at shoot around this morning here at Rupp. Uh, Moorhead State was impressive. They ran some good stuff. That is a good finish. Yeah, it's a bad, just a bad defensive trap of the ball or lack of trap of the ball by Kentucky up top to allow the slip. But he's got talking about Broom for Moorhead. He passes well off the post. He's got good hands, good shoulders. He anticipates at the rim. He will be a good player in that Ohio Valley Conference going forward. Moorhead State last year, 13 and 19 overall, 7 and 11 in the OVC. Picked to finish seventh this year. Nice back cut. Hesitation, high up off the glass, not there by Baker. But a good put back up and in once again by Janae Broom. He just he anticipates the ball really well around the rim and coming off the rim. Does number four in blue. Broom now with half a dozen on three or four shooting. Wide open out of the corner. Cameron Three, Fletcher, four, the Fletcher. six foot six freshman out of St. Louis, part of that number one class, knocking it down from the corner. Not known as a shooter, but shot it without any hesitation. His feet were set. The ball was delivered right in the shot pocket where it was in and out within a second. That was very well done by Fletcher. Coming off the curl, Baker misses that rebound taken by Ware and kicks ahead. Kentucky looking to run. Mints inadvertently knocked to the floor, so it'll be free throws coming as uh, Moorhead State has been out of fouls for 
a good part portion of this uh, first half. Kentucky's zone offense has been good for the little time that they worked on it, but Fletcher right there spotted up with his feet underneath him, so he caught it on balance, Paul. There was no wasted movement or wasted time by him getting his feet set. You build his shot from the feet up, his feet were set with a great foundation. One of the things that Coach Cal is going to like, 12 baskets, 12 of 22 shooting, eight assists on yeah, those 12 makes. That's tremendous. Mintz was a three-year starter at Creighton, the kid shooting free throws right now. Made, made 43 threes two years ago and was arguably Creighton's best on-ball defender. I mean, he, he touches the game, this kid does, in a lot of ways. And I said it earlier, he's going to help Kentucky win some games this year. Oh, very, very experienced. 97 games in total, made 79 also starts at the point. Two, Both free throws up and good for Mintz. Kentucky leading at 33 to 15. Surely to goodness, we will stay all season long with coaches not wearing suit and tie on the sidelines. You know what I'm saying? I like it. Yeah, I mean, why would you? Because most arenas, there's no fans. Today, there's 3,000 fans, but you don't need to impress anybody. And after COVID, let's stay with it. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at me today, right? You, you look very good. Take my word for it, everybody. Jimmy, you were, you were <laughs> one of those custom <laughs> shirts I know you've got. There's but, Coach. Yeah. <laughs> Lululemon. Is, I'm outfitted by Lululemon. But when you're told there's no shot, no shot of being on camera today, well, you just show up with your Lululemon on and trust your producer. There you go. There you go. <laughs> you know, back to the 3,000 fans and, and schools all over the country. But Kentucky, like so many, uh, an elite program. They usually have 20,500 in this uh, historic building and were allowed, or I should say agreed, uh, with uh, the medical folks here in Lexington that there would be 15% all socially distant. And the group here at Kentucky just worked incredibly hard to make it possible to come out and have this uh, early showcase and play basketball this year, as so many other schools have done around the country. And not without incident. Mentioned already that Detroit that Mercy had to pull out. And I was watching a tournament there. earlier today up in South Dakota. And of the original eight teams that entered the tournament, three or three four. Three or four are the only ones left standing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it is going to be an unprecedented challenge all season long. I got to find out who to call to get me a cardboard set up over there by Sunday. I, think, I, I don't know if I, I turned I, it around or not. I think you just did. You know a guy? <laughs> I'm going to try to pull it off. I think you're talking to a fairly uh, large and dedicated <laughs> audience right now. <laughs> I think some... <laughs> I, I bet money-wise, if I come up with enough, I'll have a cardboard cutout over there on Sunday. I think the price will be just right, Jim. <laughs> Kentucky leading it 33-17, to 17, Moorhead State. Running their stuff, staying within themselves, and James Baker hits a couple of free throws, a six foot six senior out of Brandenburg, Kentucky. Yes, uh, will you be wearing the same outfit? You bring enough clothes for the, the, for the, the long there, weekend? There's a great chance I'll have the same outfit on. And then I go from here to uh, Louisville on Tuesday night, and I can go three for three in one trip very easily. 4.20 remaining in the opening half. It's been all Kentucky. Nice kick into the corner. Pull, step back, jump nice. shot missed by Dante uh, Allen. And the line. stick back up and in. Gosh, just a, a, a zip, uh, an opposite zipper cut by Clark without the ball to go to the rim when Allen rose up to fire that ball. A terrific example of Clark as an offensive rebounder. You go early, you don't go late. He went early and he was rewarded. Clark now with eight on three of five shooting. You mentioned it, a couple of offensive three rebounds to his credit. Seven. Askew has seven. Kentucky shooting it at 52% and holding Moorhead State to just seven of 20. Moorhead State wanted a travel. Nice kick out to the perimeter. Jump shot not there, and, and Dante Allen tracks down. The offensive Three, rebound and put back up and in. Yeah, when Dante Allen, number 11, is on the floor, he has to do that. Now, I don't think he's a liability defensively, but he's on the floor to make open shots. Average 42 in high school his senior year. Did you, did you hear that? He I, averaged 42. Averaged. I didn't score 42 total. He averaged 42 <laughs> his senior year in high school here in Kentucky. And Dante Allen, the six foot six redshirt freshman from right here in the state of Kentucky, tore his ACL his senior year of high school. He hadn't played in a long time. This is some real determination for Dante Allen to come back in, and he's getting some help from Terrence Clark. 
Every Saturday morning, we get you set for all the college football games with SCC Nation, hosted by Laura Rutledge, Roman Harper, Tim Tebow, and Jordan Rogers. We'll have live reports from the stadiums, features, and all the game breakdowns. We're just doing it with social distancing in mind, and you, the fans, will still be a big part of the show. SCC Nation presented by Regions, 10 a.m. Eastern, 9 Central, on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. Back with Jimmy Dykes, I'm Paul Sunderland. Kentucky, number one recruiting class once again. John Calipari has never had a class out of the top three since he's been here at Kentucky. This is his 12th season, and he's had eight number one overall classes, this being the eighth. Now he's talked the, at, at length the last couple of weeks. Uh, Tom Hart and I were here in Lexington the last two weeks, and Cal talked about how energized he is, and he's right because normally you follow him or talk to him in the month of September, October, the 1st of November. He's at practice, and he's in New York that night having dinner. Then he's flying to the West Coast to recruit, and he's coming back home to host recruiting visits, and he's practice again. And you talk about getting worn out before a season ever begins, especially at a program like Kentucky. It can happen to you, but Cal right now is really rested. The NBA playoffs kind of let him kind of sink into his couch and absorb the game again, kind of reinvent some of the things offensively. But he looks as good as I've seen him in a long time in practice with his energy and his voice. Dante Allen good on one of two free throws. Kick, pull up, jump shot by Baker, not there off the front of the iron, and the cold shooting continues for Moorhead State, or I should say the excellent defense for Kentucky, 245, just inside it left in the opening half. Clark now running the point. Did you hear the call, Jimmy? Vegas? Vegas, yeah. <laughs> and what, what does Brandon Boston do? He breaks off of the normal Vegas and took what the basketball game gave him. Because normally Vegas is a different cut for Boston. He read his defender was high, simple backdoor cut. Very, very well done. We were having a chuckle over that because when we were visiting with Preston Spradlin, the fine head coach for Moorhead State earlier today at their shoot around, same terminology. Yeah. Nice look down inside. LJ Bryan, six foot nine junior out of Charlton Hem, Maryland with the basket. Look at that zone. It's four blue jerseys. And almost man to man on the inside, four on the outside, on the perimeter, and a nice runner for Kentucky. Their guards year after year after year. Cal really drills that runner from six, eight feet out. And that's an unblockable shot coming off the wrist of Terrence Clark. Clark running the point now in double figures with 10 points, four of seven from the floor. Step back, open jump shot, and that knocked down nicely. Yeah, Allen just kind of danced out to the three-point shooter instead of recovering with quick speed. Off the turnover, a chance for Moorhead State. Jalon Cooper had that ball deflected. That what, hold up. Yeah, where's that going? Cooper's got it back again. Body's flying, and here comes Boston Jr. with it. And a timeout is going to be called by Kentucky. Cal asking Lance Ware, who, who are you throwing it to? And, and Lance Ware, he better not have an answer because whatever he says, it's going to be wrong. <laughs> it's going to be the wrong answer. <laughs> Seal him up. Stand there and take it, man. That's right. <laughs> Seal the lips up. Just don't say a thing. That huddle right there, though, is as important as anything that they're going to learn in this game because th th this is the time for Cal. He lit up Lance Ware right now. It's going to happen some. How are you going to adjust? I'm telling you, the stakes are going to be a lot higher on Sunday when Richmond comes rolling in here. And that voice from Calipari is going to get a lot more intense, and you better learn to handle it quickly. Well, one of the things when uh, I eavesdropped, if you will, with Coach Calipari when he had his uh, media availability earlier in the week, he said, I've got both hands and both feet on the panic button because yesterday we had the worst scrimmage we've ever had since I've been here. He did, didn't he? So I don't know what to expect. I don't know where this team is going. But to your point about sending a very, very strong message. Yeah, I think that's, that scrimmage, his starting five was outplayed by his backups. And maybe that got a little bit of their attention. But so far, man, that, Kentucky has really executed well. Not not perfect. But I tell you what, they have also fought. And that was something Cal was concerned with this morning. Will we fight in this game? Nice job of working off the pin down. Step back, jump shot back there. The long rebound deflected out of bounds by Cameron Fletcher. It'll be Moorhead State basketball, 49.3 remaining. Got to go for those rebounds with two hands. Cal looked right at Cameron Fletcher with a two-hand signal. 
Kentucky will go back and grade every film, and every play that's made with one hand as opposed to two will result in a blue line drill in the Craft Center at the next practice. Potentially a pretty deep Kentucky team this year. Yeah, nine, 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 nine or ten guys. Yeah, I mean, there, there's not thought. a bad player on that roster. You throw Brooks in there with 11. Now, he won't go that deep. At some point, the players will decide who the top seven or eight are by how they play, but certainly the options are there in practice is when you get better always at Kentucky because you're going against real dudes every day. Talked a little bit to, with Olivier Saar about that scrimmage and how it was uh, didn't exactly go the way the first unit wanted. He started to uh, maybe put a little lipstick on it, and he said, one thing we learned is that our second unit is pretty darn good. <laughs> <laughs> Funny how they look at it, isn't it? Yeah, how about that? Uh, Kentucky just put him in a spin cycle. Yeah, dribbling into some trouble on the run out late. Oh, oh. That's, oh that's off the board. An easy play to call on the goaltend, and that'll be a basket by Fletcher. I, I am a Cameron Fletcher fan. He just kind of glides defensively, a long defender. You know, not known as a shooter yet, although he's made one three in this ball game. But I think that dude competes. I think he can guard multiple spots. It came down to Kentucky and Michigan State. He's got like a Big Ten, Big East body. I, 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 I'm all in on Cameron Fletcher for Kentucky. Among so many really good athletes, ran track in high school along with playing football also. Nice close out on the jump shot. Baker not close there. And the first half will come to a close. And all Kentucky got out to a quick Jimmy 24-11 lead, 38-21, and they'll head into the locker room, leading it by 19. Uh, I've been impressed with their defense. Moorhead State has ran some good offense. They just can't finish over the length around the rim against Kentucky. Cal's got a lot of things to talk well about here for the next 20 minutes. And uh, again, Kentucky, they got better in the first half. That's what you want as a coach in your first game. Did we get better as a team? Check that yes for Kentucky. I'll tell you, there are some happy basketball fans and even happier basketball players around the country. So thankful to be playing basketball once again. Just moments away from the start of the second half here with Jimmy Dykes on Paul Sunderland, Kentucky on top 45 to 26. Nick Richards, who had an absolutely wonderful final season here in Lexington, moving on. You know who he's with? I do not. I'm almost positive that's Leah Edmond. That's the best outside hitter in the history of Kentucky volleyball. The history of Kentucky volleyball right there. That's her. That's Leah Edmond. Leah Edmond is all over their record books. Total attacks, total yeah. kills. A spectacular player, and hopefully she'll have a bright future overseas or maybe with the U.S. Olympic team. I knew you'd follow up with that really well, you and your volleyball background. You set me up very nicely for that, Jimmy. <laughs> I appreciate that. Well, there's that balance that Cal likes to have in his offense. One guy in double figures, a really productive half by Clark. Defensively, a, a three assists as well. But they move the ball so well is why you got five guys spread out like that but that that's the best I've seen Terrence Clark play since he's been in Lexington now, I've only watched him play six or seven times he hasn't really jumped out at me he did that half you can see why he was one of the top ten players in high school ball last year Olivier Saar who had to sit out much of the uh, latter portion of the opening half with a couple of fouls number 30 in white back on the floor of the transfer out of Wake Forest and a real possible gym difference maker Baker off the front of the iron and Moorhead State opens the scoring in the second 20 minutes that's a good move by Baker really sold the shot fake and the ball fake to got Kentucky defender to leave the ground first same starting lineup for Kentucky which began the game Boston Jr. ask you at the point Clark along with uh, Isaiah Jackson and the aforementioned Saar. Shot clock at eight. Step back, jump shot, needs a bounce, not there. And off the side of the iron by Jackson, but deflected out of bounds on the second effort by Kentucky, and it'll be their basketball. Who did jump out at you? If Terrence Clark didn't, maybe that's the best 20 minutes or 16 minutes you saw him play. Well, Who jumped Clark, out when yeah, you saw the group? Yeah, Clark jumped out in the first half. So far, the Mintz has played really well, I think, when I've watched Kentucky five or six times live. He's just been a, re a really steady guy. And then just, again, the freak athleticism of 23 Isaiah Jackson is, is just undeniable. 
poor possession that time for Kentucky to open the second half, and John Calipari not happy about that one, a traveling violation called against Askew as the shot clock was winding down. Cal, I'm sure, wants to start this second half with his defense getting hot like it was the first half. You can get hot defensively just like you can offensively as a team, and Kentucky was hot defensively the first 20. Good hands by Askew. Shot clock now working against Moorhead State. Hesitation and kick to Bryan along the baseline, number 22. Misses that in the rebound taken by Boston. Good look, though. Good penetration yeah. by Cooper. Boston, long three-pointer on the way. Kentucky was 4 of 10 from three-point range. Saar trying to establish some position, and a blocking foul is going to be called down inside against L.J. Bryan, 6'9", junior, out of Maryland. Paul, K Kentucky, is, they are a lot of things. One thing they are not, they are not a real physical ball club. Just in terms of rock and sock and knock you down type plays that have to be made over the course of a 30-game season. They need to become more physical. Saar has become more physical since he's gotten to this campus. Cal has kind of toughened him up, but th this is a Kentucky team at some point. They're going to have to go blow for blow, nose for nose with a physical team like a Tennessee, like a Kansas, like a South Carolina. But do they have the players that are capable and yeah. willing of, to do that? I, I think we're th th they're going to have to grow into it because they're not naturally, overall, a real physical team. Yeah, if you look at Brandon Boston Jr., 6'7", 185, I think that's generous. Yeah, Clark's thin. Sar's not a, you know, a real monster down that low block. I said in the first half, I'll say it again. I think Askew shoots a really good ball from that point guard spot. I know he does. And what a combination when Davion Mintz, again, the transfer from Xavier comes on. That's a pretty good one-two punch from outside the arc. When, when, when your point guard can't shoot, it's hard. The game gets really, really hard. Well, you just get, you become so one-dimensional. They just play you for the pass or play you for the dribble penetration playing downhill. Kentucky on the double team. Moorhead State working out of it. Baker, oh, has that shot rejected down inside by Jackson. Kentucky looking to run, and the shot clock will, vi the violation will be called as Cooper came out with it at midcourt. Was there not a change of possession? I though? thought so. I was surprised by that call. I, I was too. I thought Kentucky had it for maybe even a bounce. Right. Uh, you couldn't see it there, but either, either way. Yeah, I thought Kentucky, with one bounce, Jimmy, yeah. was going the other way. That was a tough call against Moorhead State. Coach Cal telling us uh, when we spoke this afternoon after shoot-around, he wants five, sometimes in a perfect situation, six players in double figures. That's the kind of team he wants. I, I hope that was a pass from Saar. I, th I think it was. <laughs> I think it was. Nice wow. attack of the rim once again. Scoring it is Terrence Clark. Well, he's doing what he does best in this ball game is Clark. He is a one or two bounce with a quick first step guy athlete on the offensive end. Clark now with a dozen on five of eight shooting. He's made a couple of free throws, also three assists and two rebounds. Well, Clark is perhaps as gifted as any guy that Cal has brought into Kentucky. And he's learning to play the game at a whole nother level, a whole nother speed. I talked about in the first half how Coach Cal has really done a really nice, hard, tough love job of getting the casual parts of the game out of him. And he has quickly learned. Boston just picked up his second personal foul, 16-20 remaining in the contest. Uh, it's stepping out of bounds after the freshman once again Janae Broom did a pretty nice job waiting for the double team to come You pointed it out in the first half Jimmy. He's gonna have a nice run even this is just his first year playing in the OVC That's number four in blue. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Is. I mean, he's got a he's got a power five body it's Interesting coach Calipari doubling the post right now when I, I don't think he needs to He might just be working on it defensively that with that short corner pin down the guys like Tyler hero and Shea Gilgis Alexander, a bunch of them have worked off of over the years. Now you've got Boston and Clark on that baseline pin down as well, coming off as shooters. Nice mid-range jump shot by Boston Jr. now with nine on four of ten shooting after, quite honestly, a pretty slow start. Rebound deflected out of bounds off of Isaiah Jackson will be Kentucky basketball. We'll step aside once again. College basketball.
back with you here on the SEC Network. Kentucky leading it 52 to 28. Another prize, freshman Jimmy, six foot seven, just under 200 pounds. Terrence Clark having a very nice run so far in his debut. Yeah, he's a uh, you know a unique, versatile size, skill, can play all over the floor type guy. He's a big guard that continues to lead Kentucky in paint touches. He he does things that few guys can do. And what he cannot do going forward is to disappear at times for stretches. He needs to stay consistent with his energy. I like his voice right now. His confidence has grown as this game has gone on. Out of Boston, Massachusetts, listed by many services as the number eight overall recruit coming out of high school last year. Once again, if you're just joining us for the eighth time under Coach Calipari, a number one recruiting class here in Lexington. And there was some company. I looked around at some of the recruiting services. The SEC, Tennessee was number four, LSU number five, Arkansas was six, Auburn was seven. That's a pretty good haul for the SEC. Yeah, I, I believe the SEC led in terms of numbers of players have taken in the last NBA draft. A good hard drive. That time by K.J. Hunt. K.J. Hunt, 6'3", redshirt junior out of Little Rock, Arkansas, transfer from McNeese State, did not play last year due to injury. Well, Askew's going to come out because he just gets beat on a blow by. And Cal's going to take him out with a lead like he does and says, listen, we're going to win this game with you getting blown by or not. That, that will not work going forward. And Mintz comes in and Askew sits. Yeah, the level of competition and no offense against Moorhead State. Bam. Nice play. Beautiful play as Saar is in the book for the first time since joining Kentucky. But just to finish the thought, you talked about it a lot. You'll have the game against Richmond. And then you look ahead to Kansas. That game against Richmond's on Sunday. The game against Kansas is on Tuesday. Incredibly short turnaround. That last possession, Mintz comes in and gets his eyes up. Kentucky, they, they are so good at finding their bigs off those running lob plays. And I talked about in the first half, that time Saar comes out of the dunker spot in transition and does what you do out of the dunker spot. Runner up for ACC most improved player last year at Wake Forest, solid body, seven foot, 237, average 13 and nine on the year. Little step back yeah. by Saar showing, boy, he's got nice feet. Nice feet and a nice release. <laughs> yeah, that, that's that's what I've seen from him. A pretty good combination for quick points so far for Olivier Saar out of Bordeaux, France. And nice attack of the basket that time by Julius Dixon. Saar not wanting to pick up his third personal foul. You know, and Moorhead State did not attack that press in the first half. So you see that they have made improvement within this game. That's the stroke I'm telling you. Watch out, SEC. I, I think this guy is going to shoot the ball as well as anybody in the SEC this year from distance. Davion Mintz now with eight, a perfect two for two from three-point range. And he shoots it from deep with ease, Mintz does. Watch how easy this release is. Gets his feet into it. That ball has a true rotation every single time. Valuable, valuable piece is number 10 in white. Brandon Boston just picked up his third personal foul, so he'll head to the sideline. Askew comes back on. Redshirted last year at Creighton, tried to play through some early season ankle injuries, and eventually that sidelined him for the season before he transferred here as a graduate student to Kentucky. Oh, well, Clark got caught on the elevator screen. Wide open, Dixon off the side of the iron. Clark looking to push it. Set his feet, another three. That came up well short. Offensive rebound shot clock did not reset, but now the officials are going to talk about it. Could hear the official. He said he wants the shot clock reset to 24. The three officials today, John Hampton, Don Daly, and Vladimir Voyard Tadal working this game in Lexington. They haven't had any exhibitions or any preseason no. either. Have the officials? They're getting their game legs as well. Sar, 18 footer on the way. Nicely done. He, he's money from that 15 to 17 foot spot. Sar is man. What a luxury when your five guy 
can pop off the block, run offense through him, or make shots from that spot on the floor, it's tough to defend, man. Jimmy, that looked very, very comfortable for Saar, as did the previous play when we were talking about his footwork and his release. But can he score down on the block against a physical defender? We don't know yet. You know, as, as a freshman at Georgia Tech, Wake Forest, I'm sorry, he, he could not. He really struggled through contact his freshman sophomore year. I think he's gotten better. I think he's gotten stronger. And that's something to keep an eye on, his development going forward. Clark pull up, jump shot, not there, and a foul is going to be called. Some contact down inside. I think they got, we'll have to sort that out. They might have gotten James Baker working on the block out against Saar. No, but, but Cal will ask Saar to do something that he's not capable of doing. So if he's not capable of being just a true low post, back you in, power move, drop step guy, Cal's offense won't have him in that spot. LJ Bryant just picked up his third personal foul. He was the one trying to block out or push it on Saar. Nice little pocket pass. Step back jumper off the side of the iron. Not there. Rebound taken by Moorhead State and Julius Dixon. Kentucky leading at 61 to 32, 1245 remaining. Wide open jump shot off the perimeter. Davon Cooper able to knock down the three. Well, if you're going to help from that weak side, you certainly have to recover at a quicker pace. Kentucky using just drop coverage on their ball screen action right now. The big is just dropping with the ball, not allowing it get, to get to the rim. Davion Mintz going with the offhand. He'll get to the free throw line to shoot a pair. Right now, Kentucky 6 of 14 from three-point range, shooting 55% from the floor. Kentucky was so good from the free throw line last year, helping them significantly to their 49th SEC championship in program history. And 15 and 3 in the SEC last year, that was a magnificent performance. First free throw rattles home. Next Saturday's college football lineup right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. If Vanderbilt stepping in and they'll take on Missouri. Kicks things off at noon Eastern, 11 Central. Then it's the Egg Bowl. Old Miss host Mississippi State and Oxford at 7.30 Eastern and 6.30 Central. Then it's number 13 Georgia and South Carolina in our SEC Saturday night matchup. The SEC Network alternate, alternate channel will have uh, other games for you. To find the SEC alternate channel in your area, go to the SEC Network. Com. And Nick Saban, some big news out of Alabama. Nick Saban has tested positive for the coronavirus. Yeah, and this time he has the symptoms. You know, he tested positive maybe a month ago, five weeks ago, and then came back with negative, negative tests, allowed him to coach, but no, not this time. These players here in Kentucky at Moorhead State and all around the country are having to be so incredibly disciplined. We had a really long conversation with coach Calipari and Eric Lindsay the sports information director here at Kentucky about all the steps they're taking to make sure that the players for first and foremost are as healthy and as safe as possible Kentucky's as close to being in a bubble as you can yeah, be yeah. in college ball considering where Wildcat Lodge is how they walk across the parking lot Basket in the craft center there they don't cross paths with any other team there's no other personnel in the building Kentucky's done a terrific job of handling a hard situation. I tell you in the first half how much I like Cameron Fletcher. I'm going to tell you again. I, I want to hear it again. I, I, I think he's a very important piece for Kentucky this year. Defensively, 21 and white is going to be a guy that Cal can say, I need you to take out, take out the point guard, the two, the three, or the four. He's a battler. He fights, makes some open shots. He will find his way on the floor with some viable minutes, 21 in white. Barriers, last assignment, she was working in the WNBA. Back with Jimmy Dykes, Kentucky in the preseason poll, if you will, ranked at number 10, riding the strength of that number one recruiting class all over Moorhead State, 65-35, doing a good job at the defensive end, sharing the ball, good balance. And you've been talking an awful lot, and with good reason, Cameron Fletcher. He has filled the stat sheet. Look what he's done in 10 minutes, Cameron Fletcher. Got seven points. He hasn't missed a shot. He's three out of three with three rebounds and two assists. I mean, that's grading out at a high level over a 40-minute game, and Cal's rewarding him now with more minutes.
Broom back on the floor. Wide body freshman out of Florida wearing number four in blue. They're trying to get the ball to him down inside. Just inside of 11 minutes remaining. It's been all Kentucky after they led it 45 26 at the break. And my guy Fletcher, though, in there as a 6 6 wing, battling with a 6 10 post player. He got switched off. He did a good job of keeping his feet alive. Front of the post, played low and physical. Really good off ball defense by Cameron Fletcher. Julius Dixon with the basket wearing number 11 in blue for Moorhead State. Their leading scorer now with 11. The balance on number 55. Askew with 10, Clark with 12, Davion Mintz with 10. So three players in double figures right now for Kentucky, and they're shooting it at 56% from the floor. 6 of 14 from three point range. Lance Ware, number 55 and wide on the floor, and a Traveling violation is called against Terrence Clark. Yeah, Clark, he, he's, he's been terrific, but that time he's just messing with the ball. I mean, a dribble handoff came, get it, boom, and go, and he's messing with the ball, and he was messing with the ball right in front of Cal. That's two bad things right there. Couple of dribbles, pull up, jump shot. You don't want to foul a jump shooter, KJ Hunt, 6'3", Redshirt Jr. The out of Arkansas will go to the free throw line. <laughs> Even with the mask, I think I know what the message is. Cal has done a great job of keeping his mask up and on today, by the way. That is a high energy talking head coach. And he knows, man, the, the, the respect he has for his guys and what they've battled through just to get to today. And he's been very open about the mask and how important it is just to protect our sport right now and do all we can and he is so gracious with his time with his talent with his money i mean the things that he's done with uh the uh, M M M john mcclendon initiative here with helping minorities kind of jump start their career he has kind of put his money where his belief is he and his wife have just done fabulous things for this lexington community and state overall throughout the years. Askew with a pull-up jump shot. He adds to his total now with a dozen. And Coach Cal, really speaking from the heart, talked about how thankful he was to his players for being so responsible. Because, you know, this is a very, very big deal playing their first game for Kentucky. A lot of family and friends. I know among the 3,000 in the building, but none of the family or friends can go anywhere near the players. They have to be kept completely separate and away to protect the health of the team and their ability to play going forward as many games as possible. Yeah, I don't know if we've had a really good shot. I mean, you can see it all game long, but at least look up top right there, how the bench is spread out. The coaches are socially distant the entire game. More, Morehead State actually has their players down on the baseline, which I like the rule this year by the NCAA saying you can extend your bench down and across the baseline to keep your kids spread apart. It's a completely different feel from a coaching standpoint if you're John Calipari today or Preston Spradley. I'll tell you, that was a really good possession for Moorhead State. They touched the ball a lot. They shared it well. Wild pass that time up for where, but has been the case all evening long. Moorhead State just can't knock down enough shots. They're only 14 of 37 from the floor. That ball tipped away. Nice work getting on the floor once again is Cameron Fletcher. Boston playing with a little bit of foul nice. trouble, <laughs> but no difficulty going to his strong hand. You know, he's, he's so long, it kind of can offset his lack of just physical strength because he took a pretty good hit right there, but the long reach allows him to get the shot off and not bother the shot. There's a mismatch. Yeah, back inside. That's good, smart basketball. That's good by Broom. Janae Broom, six foot ten, wide body, and a good place to go. He's played well. Room now in the game with eight for Moorhead State on four or five shooting. Shot clock now just inside a ten. Mintz step back jumper off the front of the iron rebound taken easily by KJ Hunt. Kentucky with a very, very comfortable lead. The coaching staff, which has changed quite a bit, we'll talk about that in a moment. For Kentucky on the sideline. And again off the side of the iron, rebound battle for and taken by number 55 in white, Lance Ware. Kentucky not running that time. He, 
Mintz was pushing hard, but no one was running to the speed of Mintz. You got, what, seven and a half minutes left in the game. Calipari is not going to let off in terms of how he wants Kentucky to play. Watch Cameron Fletcher. He's a 6'6 wing who gets caught in the mismatch down low, but dude is a battler. A battler. If Calipari is looking for a defensive stopper, he may have found one in his first game in Cameron Fletcher. Back in Lexington with Jimmy Dykes, I'm Paul Sunderland. Lots of changes on the court for Kentucky, but also along the sideline, Jimmy. Longtime associate head coach Kenny Payne went off to work for the New York Knicks, Tom Thibodeau, and Bruiser Flint was brought in, Jay Lucas. There are some familiar faces, but Coach Cal calls this the, the staff of the future here at Kentucky. Well, Cal has always tried to be out in front of anything that's changing in college basketball, and certainly recruiting is changing with the restrictions you have right now with COVID and the extended dead period. And, and I think Cal bringing in Lucas, who's known as a G whiz recruiter and skill development guy. Bruiser obviously knows Cal as well as anyone from his days all the way back at UMass. So there's nothing wrong with changing just the energy, the, the thoughts, the organization of your staff. So far from what I've observed, everything's clicking. Attack of the basket once again by Clark, but the foul will be called on the perimeter. Moorhead State, a lot of early foul trouble in the opening half. They've cleaned that up a little bit. That'll be their 16 foul, five team fouls so far foul for Kentucky. Clark really good with the ball for a 6'7 kid in terms of his change of speeds and how quickly he gets from one gear to the next. Wrap that curl and go score. Sar has been really good offensively in the second. Nice footwork again, stepping up and under. Scoreless in the first half. He played some minutes with foul trouble. He's got eight so far in the second half. Yeah, he, he stuck that left pivot foot in the ground and did not let it come up. And just pivoted himself right in front of the rim. Moorhead State with the absence of, oh, nice pass on the back door and throwing it down, nicely done by James Baker at six foot six, rising high to throw that one down. I'd, I'd have to see it again. It looked like B.J. Boston just broke off defensively and rushed up the floor at the ball, allowed his guy to backdoor cut at the rim for a wide open. With the absence of Detroit Mercy, who couldn't come to this uh, event as scheduled because of COVID. And contract tracing it'll be uh, Moorhead State taking on Richmond on Sunday pull up jump shot step back by Jackson needs a bounce and gets it and the lead is now 73 to 41 as we approach the six minute mark Moorhead State out of the Ohio Valley Conference and that, that, that's a good basketball yes. league you, know, you got talked about Murray State this year it's going to be Belmont Murray State Austin P any order right now is picked first second and third but well, they've had some big-time players come out of that league. Moorhead State picks seventh or eighth right now. They've got to make shots. They struggled shooting the ball last year, and so far this year, that ball's not dropping at a high rate either. Preston Spradlin, their fourth-year head coach, who spent five years on the staff here at Kentucky before going over to Moorhead State, told us last year that the outside shooting or lack thereof, basket by Boston, just became contagious. They were a good, pretty good three-point shooting team the year previous, but last year just shot it at 27%, among the worst in all of college basketball. And to compound matters, only made 64% of their free throws. So that's, that's a lot of points left on the board. <laughs> <That> is. <laughs> You know, I had a four-hour flight delay yesterday coming here. Not that I'm bitter about it, but it did allow me to have some extra time to, to, to study Moorhead State. I love this about Moorhead State. The school began in 1887 as Moorhead Normal School. The first day of class, they had one student. It started with one student, and now here they are playing in Rupp Arena. That, that's good growth right there. That's a wonderful story. I'm, I'm still trying to figure out the normal as of abnormal being the I, I don't know. It started off as Moorhead Normal School. Want to remind everybody that uh, every Saturday morning we get you set for college football with SEC Nation, hosted by Laura Rutledge, Roman Harper, Tim Tebow, and Jordan Rogers. We'll have live reports from stadium features, all the game breakdowns, all that coming your way. SEC Nation presented by Regions, 10 a.m. Eastern, 9 Central on the SEC Network. You know, one of the things I look forward to following Laura Rutledge on Twitter is her, her baby, Reese. 
crawling down the hallway and picking between one football helmet and the other. <laughs> is and that how you? Is that how you bet the games? That's how I bet the games. <laughs> yeah, she's pretty good at it too, by the way. Well, I pick stocks. You know, there's a story about the chimpanzee that throws darts at the uh, Wall Street Journal. That's right? how I. That's how I pick my re <laughs> retirement fund. So. <laughs> You better keep working, then. I, I am. I oh, am. Just when I was as bragging long, about the mask, long, that moving screen got, got the mask off. As long as they'll have me, Jimmy. <laughs> Cal, Cal knows he's got a chance to have something special this year. Now, they're, they're a long ways from it. I know they're up 30-some points on Moorhead State. But the pieces are there. It, defensively, this team could be about as good as he's ever had because of how long they are. And their instincts are good now. They're on that white line tonight. One thing I love about calling a game from the second, the top level of Rupp Arena, we can look right down and really see the rotations. They've had some good rotations defensively in this game. Good close out by Fletcher. That rattles in, out, back out again, and the rebound taken by Jacob Toppin, wearing number zero in white. Pull up jump shot at the other end, not there, and the rebound taken by Jalen Sab Sabri. I don't know why Askew threw the ball to Toppin at the 16-foot mark. Three fifty left in this one. Does it hurt Kentucky? You know they were having this showcase, and a team had to drop out. When you have as young a team, they're missing a game here in this opening weekend. They are, but you think about it. Had Detroit not dropped out, Kentucky would be playing on Wednesday, Friday, Sunday, Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah. So I, what will help Kentucky is now they have more time to prepare for Richmond. I know Kentucky fans are saying, oh, here we go, talking about Richmond again. I'm just telling you, it's going to be a heck of a test. They run a system. They're picked to win the A-10. They got real dudes. They got a defensive point guard that's a defensive player of the year in that league that, that can cause Kentucky time. problems. That's going to be a monster matchup on Sunday afternoon on ESPN. Now let's take a look at tonight's protection spotlight brought to you by Allstate. Well, Kentucky, over the years under Calipari, they, they find their bigs around that rim as well as, as well as anybody. He started it back in his days at Memphis, driving the ball and throwing it up. And this time it's the two transfers, Mintz to Saar. I think we'll be calling their name a lot this year. Olivier Saar, I was looking back through his resume when he was at uh, Wake Forest. He had a game 30 points, 17 rebounds against Notre Dame. That is really, really solid production. He's going to add an awful lot to this very young Kentucky team. I guess that's uh, kind of uh, redundant, if you will, that Kentucky and Young, along with uh, Davion Mintz, the graduate transfer, originally from Charlotte, North Carolina, had a really nice career at Creighton before coming over to Kentucky. This is good. I'm learning stuff during this broadcast. John Adams, longtime former head of uh, basketball officials for the NCAA, he tells me that back in the day, normal schools were predominantly schools that trained teachers. Oh. So Moorhead State started as a teacher's college. And uh, there you have it. Nice play on the cut, easy basket for Kentucky as we get inside the three-minute mark. Toppin coming over from the weak side with a steal. Yeah, most of the sets that Moorhead State runs, they end in that high-low look. They're, they're, they're executing it to the point, but you can't make that high-low pass against the length of Kentucky. At least it's very difficult to. Ask you hard off the back of the iron, not close, Moorhead State. You know, I like that Moorhead State has stayed with their game plan. They've stayed with what they want to do for Preston Spradlin. And once again, we were both very impressed with the practice yes. he ran this morning. And uh, he talked a lot about this unique season. And it's just as unique for Moorhead State as it is for everybody else around the country. How you have to be more concerned about yourself rather than spending so much time scouting another team because there's so much uncertainty. Yeah, I, I, thought, I thought he made a great point. I'm sure most head coaches across the country will buy in. This year, focus on coaching your team because your schedule may change in 24 hours. Have your dudes ready to roll. And Coach Will, in time.
There's next Saturday's college football lineup right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. Vandy, Missouri, they'll kick things off at noon. Then it's the Egg Bowl. Old Miss hosts Mississippi State in Oxford. And at 7.30 Eastern time, 6.30 Central, it's number 13 Georgia and South Carolina in our SEC Saturday night matchup. Be sure and check things out as well on the SEC Network alternate channel in your area. All Kentucky so far led it 24 to 11, 45 to 26. Terrence Clark was outstanding. Davion Mintz along with Devin Askew, Isaiah Jackson. It's been a team effort. Olivier Saar, the transfer out of Wake Forest, certainly got things started. Jimmy in the second half. Yeah, that foul trouble kind of took him out of the game in the first half. Kentucky with a plus 17, I believe, rebound advantage in this game, which is about what it should be over a smaller Moorhead team. There's that zone again by Moorhead. Kentucky has cut it up really well with guys cutting without the ball and cutting with the ball as Boston just did. That's, I'm impressed with Kentucky's zone offense this early in the year. Boston now with 15. Want to remind you as we open things up with a college doubleheader coming your way on the SEC Network. Next up, it'll be Jacksonville State taking on a very, very good team from Alabama. Well, they play fast, don't they, Alabama? Very fast. I had him a couple times last year. What a good backcourt. I had a wonderful game between Alabama, Anthony Edwards, and Georgia. And congratulations to the SEC, University of Georgia, and Anthony Edwards being yeah. the number one overall pick. Almost half of Alabama's field goal attempts last year were from the three-point line, and that's not going to change. That style allows them to, to, when they're on, they can beat anybody in the country. Uh, they, they, make sure you clip that film, Coach Cal, because your guys yeah. just got outworked on the boards. And that hasn't thought to happen a lot this year, but he'll show his guys that one. So you mess around like that going forward, we're going to be in trouble. An errant pass. That ball out of bounds. That was not Fletcher's uh, fault, number 21. That was Toppin getting in the air with nowhere to go. 105 remaining. All Kentucky once again. A very, very solid start. Looking forward to uh, Alabama coming up in just a few moments uh, against Jacksonville State, number one recruiting class in the country coming in for Coach Calipari once again. He's in his previous 11 seasons, he's never been outside the top three in terms of a recruiting class, and this was his eighth number one recruiting class by one service or another. Broom working down inside, and it looked like a hook at first, but the foul is going to be called on Lance Ware. What do you think about the upcoming schedule and, and how quickly we'll learn about Kentucky? Maybe next Tuesday or maybe Sunday? It, it, we're we're going to learn Sunday, we're going to learn Tuesday, and then we're going to learn the following Saturday when they take on Georgia Tech and Atlanta. That, that schedule there is going to challenge you at the highest level. And a UCLA pick to win the Pac-12, and then that all-important game against Louisville on December the 26th. Here's what I like about Kentucky today. This does not look like, to me, a team that for the first time these guys played together in a game. And remember, Keon Brooks did not play today. Right. Cal didn't have him available. So Cal had, for the most part, except for the last 50 seconds of this game, he had 10 guys playing together for the first time. They executed. They moved the ball well. They didn't play hero ball. They trusted each other. There's a lot of good things in this film to break down. Moorhead State obviously is not at the level of Kentucky, but still Kentucky executed very well for the first time to play together. Riley Welch on the floor wearing number 13. Brennan Canada as well out there on the floor wearing number 14. I got to worry about where to get some pumpkin pie and turkey tomorrow in Lexington for Thanksgiving. That's my next concern as I, as I wait for uh, the R Richmond game Friday night, Kentucky's game on Sunday. And, and as a quick reminder about the Richmond game, that's at 1 o'clock Eastern time. A very, very solid early, early test for Kentucky. Time winding down here. Kentucky has been very, very impressive indeed. It'll just be dribbled out. Moorhead State stayed with their plan. They're going to be a solid team in the Ohio Valley Conference. Preston Spradlin had his team prepared, just outplayed by a very, very good team. The Kentucky Wildcats, they win it easily, 81 to 45. Well, balanced scoring by Kentucky, and that's what John Calipari wants. He had multiple guys in double figures. They handled the backboards like they're supposed to, plus 13, plus 14 for the game. They didn't turn it over a lot, and they had to execute against two or three different defenses, and I thought they did a good job of it. Are there 
things that have to be corrected? Absolutely. But that's for everybody in college basketball today. A good, good start, though, for Kentucky. Four players in double figures, shot 57%, had 18 assists. Solid win for Kentucky. We'll be back with more right after this. Back with Jimmy Dykes, Paul Sunderland, wrapping things up here at Rupp Arena. Kentucky, an easy win over Moorhead State and a very solid, cohesive team effort at both ends of the floor, Jimmy. They didn't look at all like a team that this is their first time to play together. Ten brand new bodies for Cal to work with today. And look at the balance scoring, which is exactly what John Calipari has always had when his teams are really good. And you got four guys in double figures. Isaiah Jackson just one point away. You factor in that Saar really didn't get to play much in the first half because of foul trouble. I think John Calipari is going to be really pleased with the film when he breaks it down. Now, the stakes get a lot higher on Sunday, as it should, but, can, but Kentucky passes the first test of the season with flying colors. Let's take a look at the final numbers. Very impressive from Kentucky. Efficient from the floor. They shared it very well with those 18 assists. You can't knock that at all. And to your point, didn't look like 10 new faces that had never played in a real game before. Yeah, and Moorhead State, I thought they ran some good offense. I did, too. Kentucky was alive and alert defensively. I thought the rotations were good. This is a Kentucky team that, that defensively going forward could be and should be one of Cal's better defensive clubs that he's ever had in Lexington. And this is all done without Keon Brooks. Hopefully he'll be back from that calf injury. Back maybe in time for Richmond, but maybe more importantly in time quickly for Kansas next Tuesday. Absolutely. Hey, happy Thanksgiving, Big Blue Nation, right here in Lexington. Yeah. Thanks for having us. Yep, indeed. Let me uh, wish you, Jimmy, a happy Thanksgiving yeah, you to too. you and your family. Thank you very much. And to everybody here around the SEC Network. Thanks so much for watching. More basketball coming your way. Second half of our doubleheader as we begin things on the SEC Network. Jacksonville State at Alabama. Let's send you to Tuscaloosa for more college basketball.